Tonight at Tropicana Field, the homestand continues with this series against the Toronto Blue Jays. Middle game of this series, the Rays winners last night, taking the first game from Toronto 4-1 and breaking their 11-game winning streak. Here is the American League East up to the moment. Boston by two and a half over New York and Baltimore. The Rays now four and a half back. And the Toronto Blue Jays five and a half out. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to The Trop with Brian Anderson. I'm Dwayne Stath. So good to have you looking in tonight. Todd Callis along in just a moment. Well, for Will Myers, it's been quite a first week. He finished the road trip in great style and certainly opened the homestand in good style last night. I think this fast start is because he seems to be able to slow the game down. I, that's exactly right. You know what? Think about this. After Will Myers took an 0 for 4 in his first start of his big league career, he's hit in seven of the eight games, seven straight, saving his best for the last three. You see what he's done right there. Six out of 13. Of course, who can forget the grand slam off CC Sabathia and the monster blast last night to dead center field? You know, we've gotten a glimpse of that powerful stroke as it explodes into the baseball. I thought he's done a very good job of handling mistakes, and he's also shown the ability to make adjustments, and that's something that's going to be key for him moving forward in his young big league career. Matt Moore is going to take the hill for the race tonight. He's coming off of a very nice outing against the New York Yankees. He had had three subpar outings before that. He goes into the big stage against the Yankees. He pitches into the seventh inning, gives up just the four hits, three earned runs, did a very nice job of minimizing damage, giving his team a chance to win. And I like what Matt Moore said. He's like, I'm just thinking about staying aggressive early and attacking the zone. That is a recipe for success. And his career numbers against this Toronto ball club, Good ones. Five starts, two and one with a 3.33 ERA. And in just a few moments, he'll head to the mound after his 10th win of the year. So the Rays hit three consecutive home runs last night. And James Loney, right in the middle of the lineup, is the guy who started that. Tom Callis takes a look at Loney's on street in a moment.
get those wind sprints in before this game between the Rays and the Jays on a Tuesday night middle game of a three-game series. What do you think about uh, James Loney, Sean Rodriguez? Phenomenal. <laughs> Thanks for that. We're talking a little James Loney and what he's done his last six games. How about against lefties this year? An OPS on base percentage and slugging percentage of 940 against lefties. So against Mark Burley, of course he's in the lineup. How about James Loney? There he is against the lefty in Boston, just going the other way. Joe Madden loves his approach with two strikes, loves the fact that he stays calm in there with two strikes, and he talks about how he loves to drive in runs. 375, a couple of extra base hits, including that blast last night, starting off three consecutive home runs in the second inning. Here's Joe Madden's thoughts on his first baseman. I feel good, you know. There's been throughout the years, goes up and down frequently. <laughs> I wish I wish I could hit 300 every month, but uh, it's just not uh, it's not the way it goes. He never seems to be in trouble with two strikes, and he drives and runs with singles. He doesn't try to do too much, and that's the beauty of him as a contact hitter with uh, the power that he's demonstrating. Like that home run was hit really well last night to right center. So. Um, yeah, I just I just like the combination of factors that equal James Loney. I think he's he's a really good baseball player, uh, defensively, offensively, et cetera. But the thing he's never seems to be in trouble out there. Batting seventh in the lineup tonight, Joe Madden has three righties with Evan Longoria, Will Myers, and you know Escobar stacked up against the lefty Mark Burley. In fact, you'll see all the lineups in the first pitch right around the corner, less than three minutes. Enjoy all the action right here on Substance. been as advertised, providing the Rays with additional right-handed firepower, highlighted by his 422-foot blast last night in his first A.B. at Tropicana Field. Tonight, a pair of southpaws square off as Mark Burley goes to the hill for the Jays, and the Rays counter with plate thrower Matt Moore. Once again, square off on the heels of the Rays' 4-1 victory in last night's game. Tonight's lineup brought to you by Sweet Bay Supermarkets. John Gibbons puts together this lineup for the Toronto Blue Jays. Melky Cabrera will lead off 
Cabrera will be the DH with Jose Bautista in right. Edwin Encarnacion at third. Adam Lind at first. Mark DeRosa is at second base. Rajon Davis in left. Colby Rasmus hit seventh. He is the center fielder. J. Pierre and Sebia behind the plate hitting eighth. And my series scores is the shortstop hitting ninth. Now taking the mound tonight for the Tampa Bay Rays going to be left-hander Matt Moore making his 16th start of the season. Season numbers brought to you by Coventry Healthcare of Florida. Coming off of a solid outing against the New York Yankees in New York. Pitched into the seventh inning. Gave up three earned runs and picking up that ninth win of the year. Let's take a quick look at the defense as it lines up behind Matt. In the outfield left to right, Sean Rodriguez, Desmond Jennings, and Will Myers across the infield third to first. Evan Longoria, Yanel Escobar, Kelly Johnson, and James Loney. Jose Molina will handle the catching duties. Blue Jays again with Cabrera leading off. Switch hitter, so he'll hit right-handed here against Matt Moore. And all set to go to work. And the first pitch of this game, presented by Pincher Penny, is down and in a fastball. One ball, no strikes. This one popped up on the infield, and Longoria makes the call and the catch. One away. Well, I would have fully expect this Toronto Blue Jay lineup to take the approach off Matt Moore that the Baltimore Orioles did. And that's to come out and attack early. They know, you know Matt Moore, his own comments. He wants to be aggressive early, attack the zone. Certainly, Toronto knows that. So I would expect them to be ready to hit and swing early. John Gibbons club, a game over 500 at 38 and 37. And the pitch to Batista is down. And that has been the nature of this Toronto ball club anyway over the last few years to be very aggressive up there at the plate. And now Bautista shortens on the bat takes the pitch for a strike. Bautista drove in a run with a fielder's choice ground ball last night. Going over for four. And it's popped up. Foul ball right side Loney after it. And that ball is going to be out of his reach into the dugout. Had he gotten to the rail, I'm not sure he could have reached it. But you would anticipate that he would get that close. Yeah, b between Loney heading over there and Jose Molina not moving from his catcher's position, that ball a lot closer to the field than thought. Like, this is like a ball that's 15 rows back. Here's the one two and Bautista is out on strikes missing the curveball and boy did he miss that if you can get Jose Bautista to swing like that I mean he started to commit realized curveball tried to bail out of the swing it just had <laughs> committed too quickly just completely fooled by this pitch you're not going to see a worse swing by Bautista for the rest of the year. Now he's aggressive, and that sometimes will result in you uh, maybe chasing a pitch you, you won't ordinarily chase, but that swing, you're just not going to see another one like that. I, I, I think I would agree with you wholeheartedly. That was well, a guy who was completely fooled. Saying I'll never swing like that again for the rest of the year. Apologizing to everybody <laughs> for having to watch that. <laughs> the strike two and one to Edwin Encarnacion. There's a shot headed toward the corner and foul. Boy, hit the the low sidewall as he hooked it foul. I mean, do you realize how hard that ball has to be hit? I mean, that was like, you know, line drive single to left, height, and just a rocket. Five, six feet foul. I want to move.
remove that drink. Base is empty with two men out. 2-2 two, two to Encarnacion. And the count goes full. High fastball. That fastball to 94. That's kind of nice to see out of Matt Moore here in the first. You start to hump up a little bit. You got a big power hitter at the plate. Power on power. And it drops low. So after the strikeout of Bautista, Moore walks in Carnacion on a 3 2 off speed pitch. You can understand what Matt Moore was thinking. 2 2, you come with that fastball right at the top of the strike zone, maybe a little bit above, to try to get a chase off a guy who loves fastballs. He doesn't get it, so come back with the change up down in the zone. Not a bad idea, but just happened to be out of his hand. It was a ball too far down and an easy take for Encarnacion. So now against Adam Lynn, who's been red hot, Moore will pitch out of the stretch for the first time. Two outs and the walk to Encarnacion. And there's a strike around the knees. You're the pitcher in this booth, and I don't know what's going to happen the rest of the night. But Moore, to me, looks as if he's throwing the ball pretty well right now. Yeah, he does, certainly through the first four hitters. And you know what? This is how he started off in New York. Threw the ball very well. As you see right there how he elevates that ball on the inside corner. First pitch was very good, very well located. This one up and in gets it over the bat of Adam Lynn. You can throw that same pitch out over the plate right now at the same height and beat him with that pitch here with two strikes. And that's the key. If this team's going to be aggressive with him, that's fine. He's throwing quality strikes like he did to Lynn first pitch down and away. Let him swing at that all day long. That's got out written all over it. And stepping back as Matt is finally set to go into the stretch. He's trying to keep it as simple as possible. Said when I'm out on the mound, I'm trying not to think about mechanics. I'm thinking about being aggressive early and attacking the zone. Love that. Fastball is fouled back. That was your pitch, Adam. <laughs> that was the uh, that was your one pitch. It's lefty on lefty, but Lind has been very good against left-handed pitching this year. He comes into this game third in the league in hitting. 389 against lefties. Look at that. And he strikes him out. Out in front of the curveball, took a little more off that one. And Lynn is strikeout number two of the inning for Matt Moore. Scoreless as we go to the bottom of the first.
presented by Sweet Bay Supermarket. Starting lineup for the Rays, Desmond Jennings, Sean Rodriguez, and Ben Zobris. Longoria, Myers, and Escobar down the middle. Loney, Molina, and Johnson, 7-8-9 against Mark Burley. And the first pitch from Burley is a strike. Burley's ready to go. The setting that you can't even get to his numbers. Brought to you by Coventry Healthcare of Florida, making his 16th start. Here comes the second pitch. <laughs> he will set his own pace. That's for sure. Well, here's the thing. He's a veteran. He knows what his repertoire is. He knows what he wants to do to these hitters. Why wait around? He's a very good read of a hitter. He throws his pitch. He knows where the second one should be or the third, and he gets it and throws. And he goes a little bit more off the plate that time with a two-strike count. Now it's one and two. And, and I guarantee you, right, he already has the thought. This is what I'm going to do right here. So he, the, his thought is there's no reason to walk around and waste time. And it's really interesting because if you look at his stuff, and particularly this past month, the separation of his fastball to the change up and an occasional curveball, not that much. No. No, not at all. And so by setting a quick pace, that gives him the advantage. Well, and that's the way he has always pitched. But he just, he, you know, he's almost under hitting speed now with that fastball in the mid 80s. Yep. And he just does a great job of moving the ball around and frustrating hitters. A little tapper, the backhanded pick, and the underhanded toss. Plus, he's pretty good off the mound. He's a gold glove winner. Tremendous defender. Good pickoff move. We've seen that. Let's take a look at the defense as it lines up behind Mark in the outfield left to right. Davis, Rasmus, and Bautista. Across the infield, third to first, and Carnacion is Turris, DeRosa, and Lind. J. Pierre and Sebia will be behind the plate. Sean Rodriguez steps in here. He's getting the start in left field. Hits one back into center. Rasmus still gone and on the track. Just as he hit the track, he makes the catch. Rodriguez got some pretty good carry on that shot. Two up, two down. Well, Burley has really turned his season around. His last six starts, he's been very good. Three and one. ERA just over two. Yeah, he struggled in the early going and has been a big part of their turnaround. Last night had an 11 game winning streak come to an end, and he was important in that. And Zobris takes the pitch, and that's a strike. There's the turnaround, and it's dramatic. You know, and you know what? The, those last six, the very good numbers, started against the Rays back on May the 22nd in Toronto. Seven innings, two earned. Shot to left field. Davis headed toward the corner. That ball's going to be off the wall. Zobris digs for two, and he's in standing up. 19th double of the year for Ben Zobris. Well, Ben Sober is completely surrounding that baseball. He got out and around it. Just pulls that ball into the corner. The only question was, did it have enough to get out of here? High off the wall, and the Rays with the, an opportunity here with two outs. You actually see Burley got that ball to the part of the plate that he wanted it, but... Ben Zobras diving out over reaching. Here's Evan Longoria. 301, sixth in the league in home runs. And that's a strike around the knees. Now Burley gives you uh, that four seamer at about 84, 85, cut it around 80. Gloria with that one career home run. He's seven out of 23 against Burley. Off the plate, one and one. Well, that was that ball game that they jumped on Burley early. I think they put seven up in the first three innings or so. And then he just sucked it up for the bullpen. Pitched pretty well after that. Three more innings. And... What do you know? Blue Jay offense ended up coming back and winning that game late. Yeah, they won that game 8-7 to seven here at the Trop on the 6th of May. He 
gave up seven runs, nine hits, and still pitched six innings. Now two and one to count to Evan. Keeps it away off the plate. And 80s fastball there. Three and one. Will Myers on deck hitting behind Longoria in the lineup in the fifth spot. Big cut right there. Longoria trying to launch one. And the count is full. Well, why not? 3 1 count. You get a pitch to your liking out over the plate. Take a swing like this. So, Bruce with a two base hit, coming with two outs in the first. to first two men on with two men out and Will Myers will be the hitter Aaron Stevie and Burley talk about it in front of the mound Myers connecting for the second time hitting a home run last night in the second inning in between Loney and Bull's home run when the Rays hit three consecutive homers and that was Will's first at bat here at the drop. A seven game hitting streak for the young outfielder. Pitch outside. And Sebia, another quick little conversation out there with Burley. They had one before they started. It's a bad and one pitch in. They're having another one. Yeah, you just wonder if it's a, you know, the signs that the pitch itself was up and away, maybe reminding him mechanically, not with dropping the elbow. Myers missing the off speed pitch out front. It's not something you see very often with the veteran Burley. He's got a pretty good idea how to self correct. Very good idea of what he's doing. And he keeps that pitch away from him again. Off speed. Change up and the count is one and two. Well located too. Ball down and away with a little bit of late movement. I tell you there is a lot of Evan Longoria in the setup and Dale Murphy in the finish of Will Myers swing and yeah, the key for him and we've seen a little bit of it is the ability to make adjustments that's what he's going to have to do as teams start to figure out what his swing is like where he likes the ball you're going to see a lot of pitches down and away one thing that he has shown is he's got quick hands on the ball middle end you know, he's got a setup that really lends itself to getting to that pitch with some power and the ball that's thrown away from him if it's left elevated he will do damage off of that pitch it's going to be the pitch down and away and can the pitcher make that consistently two to the count and this one off the plate had him out in front so he missed three changeups. Rays lead two. We go to the second inning. No score.
is brought to you by Infinity. Luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. By Tampa Bay Radiation Oncology. When cancer strikes, strike with CyberKnife. Available at Tampa Bay Radiation Oncology. And by Toyota. Let's go places. score we go to the second inning Here's Mark DeRosa and a good fastball in there from Matt Moore to start the inning DeRosa hitting 227 four home runs and that breaking ball didn't miss by much it's one and one the 274 hitter Against lefties, DeRosa. And man started that one wide and it did not break quite enough. Two and one. Now he's behind three balls and a strike, missing with a fastball that time. Cleveland has a one nothing lead in Baltimore in the top of the second. Masterson and Tillman the pitching match up there. And ball four he misses down with the fastball and DeRosa draws the walk to lead off the inning. Oh, Rajai Davis. One thing that we have seen from Matt Moore this year is when he has been good, and he, he was very good in that first inning. When he does have a hitter like DeRosa, he figures it out quick. Mm -hmm. Talk about self correcting, he's able to do that from hitter to hitter as opposed to, you know, when he's not going well, that, that may last three, four hitters. Picks up the strike on the corner there. Chris Conroy, 38 years old, calling the balls and strikes out of Massachusetts. One count. That's up. One and one. Austin in the run in the bottom of the first takes a one nothing lead on Colorado. Dustin Pedroia's base hit driving in the run. Cut the miss on the fastball. Rajay Davis, a speed guy, put the ball on the ground, showed flash occasional extra base juice, and right there he's trying to go for one, leaking down the third base line, taking a big rip. Strikeouts, two walks by Moore. And that's very close. Count goes to 2-2, two, two, a fastball. Close, close, close. And I think what hurts him is look where Molina's set up and where he catches it. A lot of times when they catch or catches that outside of his body, the presentation to the umpire is not very good. And a lot of times you don't get the call. It don't look like that was off the play regardless. Ground ball third. Evan down to second and... Johnson will hold the ball there. No chance to double up Davis. So Davis is aboard. Davis flying up the line. Evan gets rid of it quickly, and then Kelly Johnson realizes there is no play to be made. It's Colby Rasmus to the plate. Davis in really part time duty doing some pitch running and playing occasionally in the outfield has 14 steals. It's 14 out of 15 running. First pitch strike one to Rasmus. Well, against against the lefty like Matt Moore. 
It's first movement. As soon as that front leg picks up, you're gone. Where Matt tries to combat that is he will have his high leg kick, obviously easier to steal on, but also a slide step. And you don't know what's coming as the base steal. One and one. And you can see with that slide step, he is able to deliver that ball quickly, get it out of his hand, get it to home plate, very minimal time. Takes the count to a ball to two strikes. Ray starting this game four and a half back. It's their smallest deficit since they were four back on the 11th of this month. A couple of weeks ago. Into the dirt, Rasmus swings and misses, and the throw down to first. Molina, with that pitch in the dirt, and they picked it out of the dirt for the strikeout, decided with Davis and a secondary lead, he was going to go down there. Well, yeah, because this ball in the dirt early, and Jose Molina comes up with it cleanly. Davis had not ventured too far, but you know you talk about not picking up a pitch Jose Bautista had an awkward swing on a curveball in the first inning that pitch bounced a couple of feet in front of the plate and Rasmus took a rip at it I mean out of the hand Matt Moore is able to create such spin on that curveball four seam over the top spin that it does look like a four seam fastball coming out JPR and Sebia, their catcher. Hey, hey, 230 hey, with hey, power, 15 home runs. Ball outside. Trying to open it with a change up there. Austin got another run in the first. On a base hit by Daniel Nava. It's 2 0. Colorado now hitting in the top of the second. Matt leaves this one up and away. So he's missed with back to back change ups. Straight off speed pitches. Molina trotting to the mound to talk with more. That leadoff walk to DeRosa put more into the stretch for the better part of this inning. You know, a lot of times, he, you know, especially with a young pitcher, J.P. Aaron C.B., you talked about his 15 home runs. He's going to be hunting fastball. That's what he wants to hit early in the count. So you throw him a first pitch changeup. Not a bad idea. It's a ball. Well, I certainly can't throw a fastball now. He'll be really set for a fastball. I'll trick him with another changeup. Ball two. Well, now he knows a fastball is coming, so guess what? I'm going to outthink him again and go back with it. Hey, go, throw your 92 to 94 at the knees, down and away. Go ahead, let him swing at that. Roll right into a double play for him. And he misses with a fastball wide to the second walk of the inning and the third of the game. So as comfortable as Moore appeared to be in the first, just not quite there. The same way here in the second inning. No, and, and I think in that at bat right there, the first couple of pitches, he just got a little bit too tricky with himself. There's nothing wrong. His fastball is good enough that a guy can know it's coming. If he locates it and has confidence enough to do it, he'll be fine. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe right now he's just not quite sure of that pitch, trying to find it. Jim Hickey obviously seeing something is heading to the mound. Well, you can see that delivery missed with a fastball, and uh, the Rays are going to talk it over. And you can just see Moore's body language after he delivers this pitch. Well, he's trying to find it. So Molina wants him to come in. You see him set up on the inner half. 
and he misses down and away and, and you're right Matt Moore is just searching right now and we see him do this from time to time the quicker he's able to pick it up obviously the better his outings are yeah and if he can get this guy there's no telling he could come right out and in the third inning and be the same guy he was in the first that, that's it that's what you never know when it clicks in for him well, three walks so far in this game he's walked 45 for the year and he's walked more than anybody else in the American League one and all to his stories fouls and out of play I'll tell you where he has been good is in situations like this runners in scoring position two outs opposition three for 32 it's an 094 batting average so he is able to close these innings out even if he does get into some trouble late in an inning See if the trend continues. And a base hit lined over Loney's head. Fair. Myers with a pickup. Davis scores. Aaron Sebia goes to third, and the Blue Jays take a one nothing lead on the soft liner over the head of Loney. The Blue Jays take the lead. Well, the answer is it did not. Miser as Turris cashes in for the Blue Jays here. Two outs, take advantage of a walk, and then a pitch right here that caught a lot of plate. He just easy swing, flips that ball the other way. Loney can't reach it. You know we were talking about this before the game off the air. You put that leadoff guy on, you got a chance to score about half the time. It's amazing. You get that guy out, and that percentage drops way down. 16, 17, yeah. 18 percent. Here's Cabrera. And that's why when you walk that leadoff guy, the pitching coach and the manager shake their heads immediately. Well, yeah. With good reason. They hit their way on, okay. But when you walk them, now they haven't even put the ball in play. You've handed them a base run. It's like, you know, in the in, at this level, that's difficult to do. Just like making errors. When you hand a team an extra out in an inning, look out. Yep. Tough enough to get three. Let's not try to get four or five. Aaron CB is at third, his door is at first. And there's ball two. That's the other thing. The more you struggle with your control and command, the less likely you are to get a close call to go your way. To Tapper, going to be a fair ball. Throw to first in time. Cabrera's out of there. Third to first. One run with two left. One nothing. Toronto.
And so we go to the bottom of the second with Yunel Escobar leading off against Mark Burley. James Loney and then Jose Molina to follow. One ball, no strikes. Escobar taking the pitch wide. And one, Escobar and Burley involved in that big trade between the Blue Jays and the Marlins over the past winter. And then the Rays acquired Escobar from the Marlins, as you know. Rasmus and center field reaching to make the catch. One away. And James Loney. Toyota. Let's go places. That Toyota trend finds James Loney trending in the right direction by quite a margin. Now almost caught himself in RBIs, more home runs. Obviously the average better. And really, I think it's just a the change of scenery and coming over here and Joe Madden saying, listen, we don't want you to we're not gonna fit you into some template of a hitter that we want. You go do your thing. Take your approach, go do your thing. If you stay true to your approach, you're constantly making solid contact. I know that there's going to be some power come along with it. We've seen that, and we've certainly seen the average. So you talked to some folks who saw Loney a lot over in the National League with the Dodgers, and the, the general consensus you get is that he got into a situation where he thought he needed to hit a lot of home runs. Yeah. Well, that wasn't him. He's strong enough, as we've seen in batting practice, but let him swing the bat the way he swings it, and he'll get a few home runs along with a, a pretty good batting average right now. Well, I don't know, 6 and 144 or 9 and 77. Yeah. What will there you take? You <laughs> right. And, and, and by the way, another 55 points in the batting average, almost as many RBIs. And he shoots it through the hole. He's so comfortable doing that, hitting the ball the other way, and then occasionally pulling it to right and even ripping it up the middle. That's why he's, a, you know, up over 300 right now. Has been a little bit of a slide lately, but regardless, this is a great sign. Two strikes, the ball away, just take it away. There's no, there's no percentage in trying to pull that pitch. You, you hit a 14 hopper to second base. You take your base hit the other way. Well, here's the guy who's had a lot of success against Mark Burley. Jose Molina. Takes a breaking ball high. He is 11 of 33 against him. So a lot of at-bats. And a 333 lifetime average. Good eye against him here on the first two pitches. Two and oh. The end of the dirt, skipping past Aaron Sebia. That moves Loney to second base. Wild pitch charge to Burley. It's his second wild pitch of the year. And Aaron Sebius had a little difficulty, continues from time to time, a little difficulty blocking pitches. There was no lateral movement on that pitch. They were trying, he almost tried to close his eyes and pick it. That ball out in front of the plate. Now with the walk. Early walks him on four pitches. And the former Blue Jay, Kelly Johnson, up now with two men on and one out. Kelly played a lot of second base, as you know, with the Blue Jays and getting a start at second base tonight for the Rays. Only the sixth start he's made at second base this year. There's a strike from the left-hander. Yeah, but awfully used to seeing him in left field. He's played at first and third and second and left field most of the time. Also DHing. Oh, 
fastball foul right back. Well, that's where it's going to get interesting for Joe Madden and continuing to keep this lineup rolling over. Now that you've got Will Myers up here, you didn't bring him up here to be a part-time player. You didn't bring him up here to have him watch from the bench. So he's going to be out in right field. Now that kicks Matt Joyce out of there. And Matt Joyce, you know, a lot of times is going to go over to left. Well, where does Kelly Johnson go? You got Ben Zobrist at second. So Joe's got to get creative. Johnson reaching for the pitch, pumps it down the left field line. Davis on the run as he crosses the line, makes the catch. Two gone. That ball had a lot of hang time, and you really anticipated that uh, Davis might be over there a little sooner than he did because he has great speed. See him running hard. It's a lot of room to cover. Speed paid off for him. the top of the order Desmond Jennings well, you got to be careful too with this roof and tracking the ball you know that's the one thing you, you come out here and take fly balls it's one thing when you have to get on your horse and run hard with your head bouncing and your eyes trying to stay on that baseball completely different we've seen guys overrun balls yeah, and if you lose sight of it good luck from there on out yeah One and one. Rider in the left. That's going to be in there for a base hit. Loney heads to the plate. This game will be tied on the RBI single by Jennings. Two out base hit off the bat of Desmond to tie it. Desmond Jennings, when he's gotten those opportunities to go back up to the leadoff spot against the lefties, he's had a couple of nice games. Another one here. Two outs, early close to getting out of it. Stays back nicely. Drops that one in front of Davis and ties the game. Rays turned the one out single into a run. Sean Rodriguez takes ball one. Molina at second. Jennings at first. Two and nothing. John hit the ball well his first time, sending Rasmus to the warning track in center field. He came into the game 5 of 13 against Burley. And Burley leads it high up out of the zone. He's behind Sean Rodriguez, 3 and nothing. This is where Mark Burley can ill afford to live, is behind in the zone. He just does not have the stuff to pitch out over the plate. And the pitch popped up. 3 and 0. Oh. Swinging 3 and 0 oh on the fastball. Pops out to Asturias, the shortstop. Rays settled for one. We're tied 1 1.
H.H. H. Gregg. Braves continue their home stand on the heels of last night's opener. The 4 to 1 victory over Toronto. Braves getting a run off Mark Burley in the bottom of the second after Matt Moore surrendered a run in the top of the inning. Jose Bautista, Edwin Encarnacion, and Adam Lind, the three big bats in this lineup that come up here against Matt in the third. Bautista takes the breaking ball wide. Three strikeouts in this game for Moore. And three walks through the first two innings. Drives that fastball inside. Two and nothing. Matt had a very good first inning. Struggled a bit in the second. There's a strike to Bautista. The changeup in there. Bautista shaking his head. Molina trying to corral that pitch and bring it closer to the corner, but it was outside. Three and one. Bautista. Swinging on the 3 1 fastball, fouling it away. No, oh, it was good, put in a good spot by Matt Moore. And if you'll notice, Jose Molina, in his setup with Matt Moore, you know, if you've got a guy out there that's got great command, you'll set up outer thirds and move out from there. With Matt Moore, you want to give him a lot to shoot for. And his stuff is so good, you'll see Molina set up from half to half, especially early in the count, not going quite to the corner. And 3 2 is upstairs, so he walks him. With the fastball. So for the second consecutive inning, Moore issues a walk to begin the frame. Well, that's what that's what gets frustrating because you know he's got great stuff. The curveball can be very, very good. We've seen a couple of swings and misses on curveballs that really were balls out of the hand. Change up, you know, good firm fastball, but it's just been that inconsistency of command. Encarnacion walked his first time. So right away back into the stretch goes Matt Moore. Putting the leadoff man on base. Yeah, and this is the part of the lineup you do not want to be offering free passes to. High drive into left that's going to fall in front of Rodriguez. John started to charge it. And then decided he's going to have to play it on the hop. Well, Encarnacion, we've seen him hit some balls hard tonight. Foul. That one right there just did not have the mustard on it. Did not carry all the way out to Sean Rodriguez. Jays try to build an inning again here in the third. Adam Lind at the plate. Runners at first and second, and nobody out. Matt misses with a breaking pitch. Well, it is strange. He seems so comfortable in the first, and he's been searching a bit here in the last couple innings. But not all too uncommon. We've seen that. We've seen stretches of brilliance followed by where did the Matt Moore from the first three or four innings go? And so that's what we're seeing right here because a lot of these misses are not close. And you see already more balls than strikes, 50 pitches in. A strike, it's two and one. A 
Bautista walked in Carnacion single. Count even at 2 2. And what these Blue Jays hitters have shown you already the swing by Bautista on three and one, the swing there by Lind on two and one. You know, they want to swing early. So th and those pitches have been well located, not the typical spots for swings in those counts. Mm -hmm. Usually, you know, you're, you're swinging at two one heaters with that kind of aggressiveness on balls out over the plate, not at the knees on the outside corner. And that's just the mindset this lineup has. Yes. Molina hangs on to that one, a foul tip strikeout. And Lind is out on strikes. These guys, if they get ahead the count, they're swinging. They swing when the count is even. Right. And, and the problem is with a pitcher, the further you fall behind, you just take that margin for error and lessen and lessen. Now you've got to be perfect. Or if you just make a nice quality pitch early on, they want to swing. Let them swing early. Take advantage of the fact that they want to swing early. Strikeout of Lynn, the fourth strikeout of the night for Matt Moore. Mark DeRosa. Pitch inside. Well, he had a little trouble with DeRosa in the second inning when he started that frame. DeRosa led off and worked a 3 1 count and walked. Matt misses too low. 2 and 0. Matt looking for his 10th win of the year tonight, tied right now. And the more immediate concern is he's looking for his command and that comfort level. It's interesting with Matt sometimes when he gets into these little spots from pitch to pitch because it can come back as quickly as it left. It's cut. DeRosa fouls the fastball back. 2 2. Yeah, and you see a lot of other fastballs at 92 93. If they're thrown out over the plate like that, th th those balls are put into play quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You see how many of these fouled off. Yep. The guy looks a little tardy, fouls it off, gets a piece, this, that. Uh, it's 92 93. It's not like it's blowing you away, but obviously the deception and the way that the ball jumps on you a little bit. And now he misses upstairs with a fastball. Yeah, when he's in sync. That ball is there before you know it. And, and it, we always, when we, the first time we saw him throw. Yeah. And look how easy it is to get 95, 96. And you very rarely see that anymore from him. But you still get late swings on 92, 93. The deception and the way that the ball appears to just jump out of his hand and almost rise as it comes into the plate. Two. This one skips to the backstop, and the bases are going to be loaded. So Batista moves to third, Incarnacion to second, and DeRosa walks. So now five walks. Given up by Matt. We're two outs into the third. Rajah Davis who reached on the fielder's choice and scored the run in the second is at the plate. And Matt misses low on the fastball to him. So the Control and command issues are back here for Matt Moore in the second and third innings. Davis fouls it out of play. Now you're just hoping to minimize damage. 
as crazy as this inning and the last two have been. Matt Moore, you know, got an opportunity to get out of this without giving up anything. Tough to double up Davis. But you never know. You put yourself in a position to strike him out, get a pop-up. Still have to make pitches. And a cut and a miss. One and two. But how about that? That's a 90 mile an hour fastball out over the plate with a little bit of elevation, and it just seems to blow Davis away. Well, now you've, you've got yourself that chance. One and two. Davis pops it up. Foul. That will carry out a play. Jays need to invest in better grip stick. <laughs> saw a couple great launches last night by Encarnacion, now by Davis. Davis entering the game 5 of 12 for the walk against Moore. The 1 2 again. He blows it by him at 93. He just couldn't catch up. Now, if you're not catching up to 90, 93 is going to overpower you too, and it's up in the zone. And this is what we're talking about with Matt Moore. He's got that kind of stuff. He can get himself into these jams and then pitch his way right out. Nice one there at the letters out over the plate. Cannot lay off, and now lefty on lefty matchup to get out of this inning unscathed. Colby Rasmus struck out. His first time. Moore got ahead of him, one, two, and then threw a curveball in the dirt, and he struck out. And Rasmus takes the first pitch. It's in there at 93 for a strike. Rasmus walked three times last night and struck out. Struck out his first time tonight. Curveball winds up outside, one and one. Pitch misses. Two and one. And coming off his outing Thursday against Andy Pettit and the Yankees, and the Rays won eight to three. Struggling with his control tonight against the Blue Jays. That's a strike call. Two two. I mean, it, it is like buckle your seatbelt, sit back, and enjoy the ride. You, you just don't know where it's going to take you. Two outs, bases loaded, 2-2 two, two the count to Rasmus. He got it. Strikes him out with a fastball. So Matt got himself into trouble. Gets out of it, striking out Davis on a fastball and blowing a fastball pass. Colby Rasmus, we're tied 1 1.
one out situation in the top half of the third inning. Bottom half of the third, we're joined right now by Eric Almarola. He is uh, in a big race coming up, part of the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Eric, tell us about the big event going on in Daytona. Well, uh, July 6th, we're having the Coke Zero 400 at Daytona, and uh, we want to get that 43 car, which is the car I drive, in, uh, in victory lane. So uh, looking forward to that coming up in two weeks. But uh, really excited to be out here in Tampa, uh, get to come back home throw out the first pitch tonight uh, at the Rays game, so that was pretty special. Yeah, you're a Tampa guy. You were born in Fort Walton Beach, but moved here at a very young age and, and went to Hillsborough High School, right? I did, yeah. I, I grew up uh, not far from here and uh, went to Hillsborough High School. I played, uh, I played Little League Baseball right here in Tampa, so uh, I got... Uh, I got a little heart left out there on the field. <laughs> Let's take a look at that first pitch uh, before the game. It was a strike, I have you know it. I yeah. didn't I didn't want to hop it in, and I was really nervous about that. Yeah, that's the one thing everybody says. Don't bounce it. <laughs> there you are out there with your uh, Rays jersey. So you played shortstop in Little League, right? I did. I pitched some. Look at that. Uh, right there. He didn't even move his glove. <laughs> nice. That was perfect. It nice was. a little strike. Um, so you guys have the big race coming up, the Coke Zero 400, and you want a lot of people in this Tampa Bay area to try and, if they get a chance, July 6th, yeah. to head on out over there. Yeah, it'd mean a lot to me. You know, I'm, I'm a Tampa boy, uh, raised here and, and spent probably 18 years of my life here. So, um, you know, it's, it's fun for me to go to the racetrack and have the support of my, my family and my friends and, and all the people here in Tampa. So anybody in Tampa that uh, is thinking about going, I, I urge you to go. It's, uh, it's a great event. Uh, going to have a lot of fun out there. You see a little comeback here there to Mark Burley for the first out of the inning. So you were born in Fort Walton Beach. Matt Moore born in Fort Walton Beach. So you got a little extra uh, rooting interest today. Yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy. I've met all these guys. And, uh, I, I, you know, Matt, I think he was uh, born on Eglin Air Force Base in Fort Walton Beach, which is exactly where I was born. My dad was in the Air Force. So um, that was really neat. And then got to... Uh, Got to hang out with Matt Joyce uh, before the game today, and, and he grew up right here in Tampa and played ball, and we're the same age, so we think we probably played on all-star teams against each other with our ballparks, so uh, it's been a fun day for me. Eric, great to meet you. Good luck in Daytona. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, guys, back to you. All right, Todd, thank you. Evan Longoria up here with the count of a ball and a strike. Ben Zobrist out, pitcher first. And a shot into right field. Bautista will have to play it one hop off the wall, and Longoria will be held to a base hit. So Evan is aboard, picking up the fourth race hit off Mark Burley. Well, Bautista realizing he's not going to get to this ball, he turned and instead had designs on playing this carom off the wall and trying to keep Evan Longoria at first base. That's exactly what he was able to do. This ball, look at him go off the plate. Great coverage there. And Bautista just tracking it back and then playing the carom. Nicely done. I'll tell you what's refreshing is to see a well-hit ball put into play in the top half of this inning. We went 15 minutes and had one ball put into play. The hit by Encarnacion. Now here's a ground ball by Myers to third. Encarnacion down to second. And the ball dropped in mid-play, but DeRosa... Makes the uh, force play down there on Longoria as Myers reaches on a fielder's choice. Now, this is perfectly set up for an inning inning double play, and Mark DeRosa right there just takes his eye off the ball for a split second. See that head start to come down as he's gathering himself to make the throw. Janelle Escobar. Early's move over to first. He has 91 kickoffs yeah, in his it, career. And I'll bet you that move hasn't gotten many. That's a, oh, look, here's my move. <laughs> Don't get too comfortable because he's got a way better one than that. A little roller to the right side. Might slip through and does. A base hit. Myers heads for third. The throw is not in time. He got to the back side of the bag with his hand. Myers... Turned it on, going first to third. Blue Jays want to argue the call at third. John Gibbons out there. I'll tell you what, that was a lot closer than I thought. I didn't think Jose Bautista had a chance when he came up throwing, but he low flew that ball in there. Great pick by Encarnacion, and that was an awfully close play. They can understand Gibbons coming out there to argue because that was... Here it is. 
coming up and he just air mails this ball one hops it boy that was I mean tag hand that was close here's a good look <laughs> well you're gonna get an argument from either side on that one looks like he may have gotten him that ball on the elbow before those fingertips get in there that was all I mean just about as bang bang as you can get on a slide yeah Rays may have gotten a break first and third two outs and James Loney up here in a tie game Loney scored the Rays run in the second inning that's a strike you, you think about Paul Emmel making that call we, we had a live look at it and then on the third replay yep. maybe it looked like he tagged it before the fingertips got there I mean that's how you know yeah these guys have to make the call now right now over to first look out over there Escobar back in you don't want to be the trail runner there at first and go to sleep with Burley on the mound. There's no shame with a little league leadoff. Keep that left foot on the back. <laughs> Get a good secondary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your secondary lead is back toward first. Yes. Well, we saw that with Will Myers. That was great. They had that coverage, yeah. that, that camera angle. I mean, with Andy Pettit. Yeah. Andy Pettit leg comes up, and Will Myers has just got a good step back towards first base, not wanting to get caught off. It's popped up. DeRosa backpedaling from second. And so Loney is out, so are the Rays. They leave two or tied at one through three. showdown Detroit comes into town Friday Saturday Sunday so if you're thinking about coming to the trop check out the tickets called ticket tandem Friday Saturday Sunday you can get a ticket there and you receive this cute little canvas special historic raise moments all over it guys I mean I think I'm gonna prop mine I think I'm gonna prop mine up I always destroy my walls hanging this stuff where are you guys putting yours I'm, I tell you the great thing about it is that it comes you don't have to prop it up because it's already strong for hanging it really is but you know like, the whole the hole in the wall idea I mean I just I can never get it right well, well you know what <laughs> I've been there I've been there especially if you're renting but it's an easy repair you know, yeah you, you, you well but you don't want to you know there in Sebia taking a big put swing, in an addition one. knock out a wall make the you know 
living room bigger. <laughs> Not a good idea when what you're you driving the nail in with well, a sledgehammer. Sometimes. <laughs> Depends on how the day went. <laughs> Pitch high. One and one. That's a nice uh, a nice item to go in uh, a number of places in the house, apartment, condo, man cave, the cave. Yep. Two and one to count on Aaron Sebia. On your nightstand to keep you humble. Smart. <laughs> Memories. Four um, good ones. <laughs> swing and a miss. It's two and two. We might have to keep one of those in the booth here. Ooh. Yeah. You know what? We need to start doing some stuff here. Yeah. I mean, this is it's a little decorated. It really does. It's going downhill. Aaron CB is out on strikes. That's number seven on the night, hosted by Matt Moore. Yeah, this is a, a large part of this booth. You know, just behind us here, it looks it looks really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's just behind us. If you could see what's <laughs> out there beyond what's just behind us. It's kind of an early garage motif. Well, I, okay, how many, this will just sum it up quick. How many special guests have we brought to the booth to show them around, and they come in all wide-eyed, and immediately it's just like, oh, so this is where you guys work. And they go, oh, you have a nice view. Yeah, that's right. They go, always talk about that's the That's right. View. Oh, oh look, look at this. Is. Look at this. How about it? See? All right. Well timed, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. There we go. Yeah. Driving up the place a little I li bit. Come I love it. I love yeah. it over there on the wall. We, we, well, we, I uh, can't do the hole. You can't do the. <laughs> not going to put it up over there, of course. We don't, don't like, trust us either. with the hammer or the screw or Maybe anything Dwayne. else. Maybe Dwayne. I'm not no. sure about UBA. I, you're right I on that. See, that would be worse. Right here. A little spot. Strung already. All you have to do is. Just get a little hammer here. and a little Actually, nail. Easy. Kelly, no truth tricks. be told, it was, a, it was a lease with an option to buy. So I did have the option. <sighs> Scary stuff. <laughs> I don't mess around. <laughs> that's what we hear. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. Hey, you like our view? <laughs> Count is full. Sturis with the base hit. Fly ball to center. Jennings takes care of that. So two gone. You're right there. We've got an item here to beautify this place. Well, I'm telling you, there was some cool stuff up on the wall over there. Now it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, Ray Sunday oh, yeah, afternoon there was some blue. Great stuff. I know. I wonder what happened to all that. I have no idea. It was entertaining it stuff. Would, yes, it was. Well, now we have something to put up. Yep. Courtesy of Kelly. Pitch to Melky Cabrera is high. One and one. There's a punt. Pretty good one by Cabrera rolling all the way down to the bag at third fair and there's no play. So a bunt single to third. Jose Bautista. Batista has struck out and walked. Strike at the knees. A run five hits for the Rays, a run three hits for Toronto. They fly ball lifted into center. Jennings is there. No runs a hit, one left. We go to the bottom of the fourth, tied 1-1. One, one.
Right, and all season long, Tires Plus donates $100 to the Pediatric Cancer Foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports. Base runners all over the place here in the first three and a half innings. Each team with just one run. Blue Jays have stranded seven, the Rays six. And Jose Molina opens the bottom of the fourth. One strike. A pitch down, actually. One ball. One and oh. Molina walked on four pitches his first time and is ahead 2 and 0 this time. Yet to see a strike from Burley. Three and oh. Well, we mentioned the first time up, Molina 11 of 33 against Burley, and he's pitching him as if he's 11 of 33. Yes, <laughs> he is. 0 for 7. Three and one. It's Kelly Johnson on deck. And ball four. Second time Molina's walk. It's Kelly Johnson. The Rays have an opportunity. Lead off runner aboard, lead off walk as this lineup looks to roll over for the third time here against Burley in just the fourth inning. And Burley misses inside. Now we said before, Mark Burley does not have the kind of stuff to pitch out over the heart of the plate, so he does have to pitch to the edges. Right now, they're just missing. Cut the miss, and while he may give up uh, now a, a hit or two more than uh, the innings he pitches, he normally is very good about the walks. He's been very good all year. 25 walks coming into this game in 92 innings, and that ball just grazed Kelly Johnson. Push Molina up to second base. So a walk and a hit batter. This pitch running up and in. You can see just, I mean, just a graze. Instant reaction there, and nobody had any beef. And now through a hit, hit batter, and a walk from the eight and nine hole, you now get to Desmond Jennings at the top with a great chance here. Desmond drove in the run for the Rays in the second inning. He scored Loney from second base with a single in the left. He swings away. Big cut on the first pitch fastball. Blue Jays scored their run in the second. The Rays scored their run in the second inning. Center field by Jennings. They're going to have to stop Molina at third. The bases are loaded. Desmond singles into center his second hit tonight with a walk and a hit batter, and now a base hit. The Rays have loaded him. Well, Desmond Jennings staying right back up the middle. That ball down and away. You can't pull it. That would be trouble for Desmond. Go right back up the middle. That ball on the ground. Jose's going to head out, but it was well struck. It gets to Rasmus in a hurry, so that's an easy hold for Foley. Keep those bases loaded, nobody out. And where Matt Moore, when he got into trouble with the bases loaded, has that ability to just overpower you and pick up some strikeouts, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for Burley. Sean Rodriguez goes after the first pitch, lifts a fly ball to right. Bautista sets up to make the catch. Tagged by Molina. Throw to the plate, and he is safe. He got in there. Never tagged. Sebia missed the tag, and Molina stuck his hand in there and touched the plate. And the Rays take a two-to-one lead. John Gibbons going to argue this. 
with Chris Conroy. Well, Aaron Sebia did the right thing as far as he went for the tag, and once he missed it, he had to sell it like he got it. If you go back the second time, Molina's already in there, and you're not going to get the call in that instance. So he's going to try to sell it. Big gamble there by Bautista because by airmailing that ball to home plate, you're going to allow the other runners to move up a base. So he is going for broke in trying to get Molina at the plate, and they had a great shot at it. Right there, now he tries to sell it. And Conroy was right. That glove never came into contact with Jose. Well, that's a great shot that fully illustrates how that play went down. So the Rays take a two to one lead. Molina, who opened the inning with a walk, has scored the go ahead run. Blocked by Aaron Sebia. Runners second and third now. Here's another look. Well, we've seen some nifty slides by Jose Molina here in the last week or so. He slides and kind of gets around that tag and comes down on home plate with that right hand. Remember the one that he was able to avoid was that Boston? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that not, was a great slide. Not given a whole lot of plate. No, actually given no plate to work with. Was able to get around that. And this one uh, he needed to be evasive and he was. One and one to count. Fly ball right field. Bautista will go back on this one. The tag by Kelly Johnson. He's headed to the plate and will score without a play. And the Rays take a three to one lead. Zobra is driving in the run. So Molina and Johnson have scored. Desmond Jennings now at third with two gone for Evan Longoria. Will not pitch to Evan. They will walk him intentionally and pitch to Will Myers. Well, not the first time that this has happened, as we know. Action in the bullpen. Will Myers do up here to follow Longoria. The last time this happened, it loaded the bases. In New York, and Will Myers hit his first big league home run, a grand slam. Myers had some trouble with that change up away in the first inning when Burley struck him out. It'll be the veteran left hander, Burley, against. Will Myers. Dustin McGowan continues to throw in the bullpen. And the first pitch swung on and a long foul ball. That's out of play. Strike one. Here's a look at Saturday's blast of Sabathia. Center field. Jennings scores. The Rays add another run. Will Myers comes through after the intentional walk to Longoria. Myers drives in the run. It's a three run inning and a four to one ball game now. 
Well, this ball has enough elevation that Will Myers is able to reach it, get it right off the end of the bat. You can actually hear that bat splinter. And that ball floats out into left field for another two out hit, another run for the Rays. You know, Escobar pitch is too high to him. And we said Will Myers is going to see a lot of pitches down and away, but you had better be a two plane pitcher. You can get it away. That's not good enough. It's got to be down. If it stays elevated. He's got a shot. Escobar fouls it out of play. One and one. Side of third foul. The Rays now with four runs and seven hits. Myers extends his hitting streak to eight, driving in his eighth run. Jennings with a run batted in. Rodriguez with one. Zobris with one. And now Myers with one to give Matt Moore and the Rays this three run advantage. Well, and this goes right back to that the decision by Bautista. To make that throw to the plate. He catches that and concedes that run. You keep the runners at first and second. A lot of things can happen. I mean, the Rays can still put together this inning. You never know how it turns out. But by airmailing that throw and, and letting everybody know there was no cutoff man going to be involved, you then allowed those runners to move up to second and third. And without getting the out at the plate, now it's very easy to get those guys in against a guy who's not a big strikeout pitcher. I, I still think that, he, you know, if you had to do it again, you'd probably make the same play because the throw was there and they really should have had. It. But that's the chance that you take. Raise and capitalize. And Escobar keeps this at bat going with another foul ball down on the count one and two. I mean, the difference is two outs, runners at first and second, or run home, one out, runners at second and third. Big, big difference. One, two, and he strikes him out. Got him to chase the off speed pitch. But the Rays come up with three and lead four to one.
Braves a 4 to 1 lead with that single. He is one week removed from his Major League debut a week ago today in Boston. He played that day night doubleheader. And we asked you after the first week at the big league level, how have it, your expectations been met in Will Myers first week? Hashtag TV1, has he exceeded your expectations? Hashtag TV2, this is what you thought he would do? Or hashtag TV3, you're looking for even more out of the young rookie right fielder. Tweet your votes to at Sun Sports Rays, guys. All right, Todd, thank you very much. What would be your vote? Um, let's expect more. With all that he's given, let's expect more. Yeah, let's keep that hype machine on him. Yeah. Make it more difficult. <laughs> I think that's the one thing that's been impressive about him is the way that he's handled the hype. Yeah, I, I you think know? he's handled that. Yep. Encarnacion takes a strike. And he's handled game situations. I mean, we talk about him being able to slow the game down. We talk about that frequently with young players, especially. He's been able to handle that on and off the field, it would appear, with you know, all the coverage of him coming up and all that. And game situations, same way. He's just out playing baseball. Yep. That's it. I mean, this is the to him. It's it's the same game. He, he comes up in Fenway. He goes to Yankee Stadium and is just playing baseball like he always has. And that's what it looks like. A guy perfectly comfortable in his own skin, comfortable in the element, the moment. Just playing the game he loves. Escobar with the pickup. Encarnacion is out of there. Time now for the Just for Men Auto Stop Foolproof Stat. Now Escobar making that play on the ground ball and uh, look at this the fewest errors by shortstops with a minimum of 65 games and uh, you know Escobar sharing that spot with Johnny Peralta ahead of uh, Hardy and uh, Andrus. Well this guy Escobar from uh, the very beginning of spring training Joe Madden was happy to have him because it really helped to solidify the inner defense of this team. And he had, speaking of Madden, had touted him as the outstanding shortstop that might be a little overlooked in that department, even so far as to say he should be a gold glove contender. I think that graphic speaks for itself. And, you know, we talked about it yesterday about the zone efficiency rating. And he's number one in Major League Baseball on that. So it's not that he's a statue out there who fields the ball well when it's hit right at him. He can cover some ground, range both ways. Has a little flair about him. One and two to Adam Lind. But he's a guy that you just pencil into the lineup every day at that position, and you don't give it another thought. You move on somewhere else. In fact, the whole left side of the infield with Longoria for the most part down at third. You lock down that side quick. And Lind is out on strikes. Third time that Matt Moore has struck him out tonight. Two up, two down in the fifth. Well, this is another one of those spike curveballs, and we have seen this pitch. He has been able to create a tremendous amount of spin. These hitters have just not been able to pick it up. We've seen more bad swings off that curveball tonight, off curveballs that are bouncing, some in front of the plate. That one he got Colby Rasmus on, that ball bounced a mm -hmm. good foot and a half in front of the plate. Yeah, it was in the dirt. Rasmus, uh, a bad swing. A Bautista early, a bad swing. Uh, a couple by Lind in the three at bats he's had. One and one to count. And, and that just further highlights how deadly. This guy could be to a lineup when he's pitching from ahead, where you've got to cover everything, and you're able to throw that change up like he did right there to DeRosa and that curveball, trying to lay off those close, tight spinning curveballs in a one two count. A ball, two strikes. Shot foul into the seats. Now the base is empty, two outs at the top of the fifth. The Rays leading four to one. A little uh, weather on the outside, some heavy rain, and nice and comfy inside. I'm going to tell you something right now. I had one of those storms sit over my place last night, mm -hmm. all night. It's 
good sleeping weather, isn't it? Sure is. Nine strikeouts for DeRosa, 4 1 Rays. half of the fifth. Tune in tomorrow for the Wednesday showdown as your Tampa Bay Rays take on the Toronto Blue Jays sponsored by your Tampa Bay area Mazda dealers. R.A. Dickey will be on the hill for the visiting Toronto ball club tomorrow. James Loney takes the first pitch low here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Roberto Hernandez will pitch for the Rays tomorrow. It's a 12 10 first pitch. Two and oh. Loney up in the count now. Three balls, no strikes. Three and one. Chopper right side that's going to go through lead off single in the fifth inning. So the Rays put the lead off man on base again as they did in the fourth. The fourth they drew a walk a base hit here from Loney in the fifth. Not just a chopper in the hole nothing special about that but Loney puts the ball in play. You see the frustration on Mark Burley as he was heading towards first base. You know John Gibbons said. Listen, right now, during the in the midst of their 11-game winning streak, said we, you know, pitching well, hitting well, and a lot of breaks are going our way. Well, not the case tonight. Had a chance for a throw out at the plate where the tag was there. Molina was able to avoid it, seeing eye ground balls. You know, the hit batter with Kelly Johnson that just grazed his arm. You gotta tip your hat to the Rays though for jumping in and capitalizing on that to build this 4-1 lead. And here's Belinda driving on deep to left. Davis back, and he's going to make the catch in front of the wall. On his way back to first, Loney, who was a step short of second base on that long drive by Molina. So that's probably why he's been so careful with Molina and walked him twice. Molina gave it a ride. He did. Solid, solid contact by Jose Molina. Able to drop the bat head and lift this ball out to left field. Got a chance, but nice play by Davis to get back and corral that baseball. Foul ball, that's a strike.
over to first and a foot back on the bag for Loney. Awkwardly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's where you got to watch yourself, too. Going back into the bag and you want to tweak something. Johnson pops it up. Stalked by Encarnacion, and he has a play right by the dugout railing. Kelly Johnson is out number two. You know, you, you can you, you talk about Loney the way that he went back into the bag. Obviously, probably not going to be stealing off Mark Burley. And sometimes those are the easiest guys to get as you take a look here at Encarnacion right over the camera making that play. But sometimes those are the easiest guys to go after. It's because they take their lead and they know, listen, Mark knows that I'm not running, I'm not running. You get mentally lazy, and those are the guys you can pick off. You catch up by surprise a lot. Spoken from a man who knows. You picked a few of those guys off. Yeah, they don't pay attention. <laughs> I mean, they really, they get a small lead. That's they, what they, happens if you don't pay attention. They tip you off. That's right. Don't assume anything. Any, I mean, yep. Bad News Bears taught us that. That's right. But you take it, they take a small lead and they just signal to you, look, you know I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be flat-footed. And all of a sudden you give them the A-plus move and they're still flat-footed. Mm -hmm. And those are the guys that you get. One and one, the count to Desmond. One and two. Desmond with a couple of hits in this game. It's his average up to 260. Two and two, the count. Well, Burley, a 34 year old veteran. Sean Rodriguez in the lineup against him tonight. Burley with uh, a couple of no hitters, including the Perfecto against the Rays. Multiple gold glove winner. Here's a guy who, the first couple of years of his high school years, could not make his baseball team. He was only about five feet tall at the time. <laughs> How about that? He's what, 6'2? Yeah. 240 now. Yeah. 3 2 is fouled out of play. So we'll do that again. Baltimore leading 6 to 3 at home over Cleveland, bottom of the seventh inning. The Orioles have scored five and they're still hitting. Alexi Casillas hit a home run, his first. Chris Davis hit number 28. Ground ball headed to short. Asturias makes the throw to first. The Rays are out in the fifth. They lead four to one.
Sports brought to you by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Visit your Honda dealer for great lease and finance deals on fuel-efficient Hondas. By Checkers, Feast On. And by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most innovative lineup ever. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. As the rain continues to pour outside Tropicana Field, Rays and the Blue Jays will move into the sixth inning. Matt Moore settling in in the fifth of the one, two, three frame, striking out two hitters. 97 pitches through five. And nine strikeouts, five walks, a run, and three hits. And you would love to get him through six here. You could get him through six. What a what a success after the early struggles with the command he has found in the last couple innings. Well, John Davis fouls the first pitch right back. Strike one. And so we kind of alluded to earlier. Sometimes it goes in a hurry. The first inning very efficient. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden there was a struggle in the second third and then just as quickly as it went boom it pops right back and he goes back to being dominant. All you have to do is look at the pitch counts in those innings 16 in the first 25 in the second 28 in the third and then right back to 15 in the fourth and 13 in the fifth everything's just great. Listen this is why it's exciting to tune in. You just got to tune in and watch it baby. You never know what will happen next. <laughs> The 0 2. Did he go? He checked on the appeal. Mary Darling says he held up. That was another one of those curveballs. And that, again, not competitive, but he's able to create so much spin that these hitters, they've been doing this all night long. Look at this. Out of the hand. That ball's way out in front of the plate, and Davis almost went. He's got Davis on a high fastball the last time. Davis fouls this pitch. Still one ball, two strikes. He got him to chase a pitch, a fastball up, probably out of the zone in the third. And the foul ball, fastball right there. When he elevates like that out over the plate, and when you see good pitchers do that with a nice, firm, four seam fastball, they just present it so well to the hitter. Like, look at me, hit me. <laughs> you see me really big. I'm a, I'm a balloon. And really, it's not. It's by you. It's so hard to get on top of. This pitch is up. Breaking ball, and so we go to two and two. Jake McGee, speaking of up, Jake McGee gets up. He's going to start to loosen down the right field line. that time Chris Conroy on the call struck him out on the curveball that's the tenth strikeout of the night for Matt Moore first down here in the sixth They join the team with the race season tickets. Get the best seats, biggest savings, and exclusive benefits throughout the year. Reserve your seats by calling 888 Fan Rays or visiting RaysBaseball.com. Toby Rasmus fouling off the breaking pitch. Angels lead the Tigers 5 to 2 in the top of the fifth. Cabrera with a couple of runs batted in. Also hit a home run. His 21st home run of the year. How many RBS is he up to now? 77. That's absurd. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. He's an absolute hitting machine. Power, I mean, some of those home runs you see him hit to right center in Detroit which by the way is not easy to get out of that's right this is their 75th game of the year he has 77 runs batted in <laughs> well listen I mean this guy triple crown last year mm -hmm. triple crown thinking about it again this year but uh, 
Chris Davis just keeps hitting home runs. Including connecting tonight. That ball is going to drop out of the reach of Escobar. And Rasmus is aboard. Well, that weather is starting to affect us. We had some flickering of lights here in the park, and uh, a couple of our cameras. Flickered as well. And so we're going to be down somewhat limited here for a little bit. This is your view. Enjoy. Oh, there we go. JP Aaron Sebia. Pitch down, but he went after it. That's a strike I again. I thought we were going to get a real good chance there of breaking down Matt Moore's upper half in his delivery with our one camera angle. <laughs> but now, you see, we've got at least three. 110 pitches for Matt. Yeah, Chris Davis has 72 runs batted in now. Yeah, well, and you, listen, we had a front row seat for that. Mm -hmm. It started opening day against the Rays where he went three home runs and, what, 11 RBIs? In that crazy. opening three yeah. game series. Yep. Moore opened this inning by striking out Davis, his 10th of the night. The bloop single by Rasmus. High pop foul that carries into the upper deck. This is the third 10 plus strikeout game. For more, he had 11 strikeouts against the Yankees in the September of 2011, September 22nd. Ten strikeouts against the White Sox on the uh, 28th of May last year, and now tonight, ten strikeouts, and he strikes out Aaron Sebia. Got him on the curveball, and that's number 11. But you could call it. You could call that pitch. He's going to come with the curveball. That was a great one. He kept that. He started it down in the zone, broke it below the zone. You couldn't help but have to swing at that pitch. So two outs now. Here's a Stewart's. Pitch to him is low. It's 114 pitches for Matt Moore. His career high is 117. And that came earlier this year. 2 0. Oh, he made 117 pitches against the Yankees on April 22nd. You, you know, that, that last time he had 11 strikeouts in a game, that was his. First start. That was that start in Yankee Stadium yep. where he did that in five innings. That's right. Two balls, no strikes. And he's too high. Finds the zone three and one. Four He's one four and oh for the Blue Jays. Rasmus at first, two outs. And it's a little low. So he walks the number nine hitter, pushing Rasmus into second base. With six walks. Given up by Matt. And he's now made 118 pitches. Molina goes out spending some time on the hill. Melky Cabrera, switch hitting DH tonight, will be up here. So it's a three run ball game, and the Blue Jays have managed to get the tying run to the plate here. 
in the sixth inning. Well, and you've got Matt Moore sitting at 118 pitches right now. Very rarely do you see a starter going anywhere near this number unless his name's Roberto Hernandez. Jim Hickey on the bullpen phone. And he'll be going north of that number anytime. So here's Cabrera. Swinging and missing. Fastball to start him. Cabrera bunted his way on in the fourth inning. He's one for three. And with that, he's now three of six lifetime against Matt Moore. Ground ball, big hop to second. Johnson to Escobar for the force. Two men left. We head into the home half of the sixth inning, and the Rays have a four to one lead behind Matt Moore. And the race come in to hit in the bottom of the sixth against Neil Wagner, who takes over for Mark Burley. Sean Rodriguez facing Wagner. One ball, no strikes. Wagner, part of that Toronto bullpen that's given up exactly seven runs in their last 78 innings. Excuse me, seven earned runs. But fastball. In the mid 90s, so that's pretty healthy. Again, hard stuff at 96. Two and two, more of the same. Yeah, you can you can challenge guys if you've got that kind of velocity. That's why so many managers, so many front offices, they love the big power arms because even if you do fall into some bad counts, you've got a chance because of the velocity. Problem is when it gets way out of sync, you can walk the yard and it can get ugly. Popped up. This is DeRosa. Sean Rodriguez, the first out here. 
in the sixth inning. Here's tonight's pitching performance presented by Volkswagen. Matt Moore, a career high, 120 pitches tonight, a run on four hits in six innings. Well, you were wondering how this was going to turn off. He started off very, very sharp in the first inning. Get that swing right there from Batista, and that to finish off Adam Lynn. The curveball was good all night tonight. Even the ones that were bouncing in front of the plate got a few swings off of those. Kind of struggled there in that second and third inning with command, allowed the Blue Jays a, an opportunity, but he was able to get a couple of big strikeouts to get out of that, and then take it from there. Fourth, fifth, and sixth. He will squeeze out six good innings. And Zobris takes a look at a fastball at 95. And drove in a run with a fly ball to right in the fourth. It's two and one. Three balls and a strike. And now the count is full. His stores and in front of Davis, he makes the catch and they do crisscross. And boy, I'll tell you, Davis normally would have the much better angle on that one, and they're fortunate that they're okay out there. Yeah, that that should have been Davis's ball all the way. But we've seen some interesting routes and, and timing from Davis coming after balls. And I think his tourists off the bat just said, "I'm going to get this ball." And right there, obviously, Davis did not do enough to call him off of it. Yeah, you get the feeling watching Davis through the years. Here's a gifted athlete. He's very fast and he's been kind of a role player. Pinch run. He can swing the bat pretty well with a little pop once in a while, but he's not altogether, doesn't appear to be altogether confident on a number of plays in the outfield. Yeah, not tonight. Not at all. And that and in fact that, that ball was far enough out there that you come in there charging, taking control. That's your ball all the way. And really didn't see that more of a timid approach and his tourists is like listen I'm, I'm going back. I got my eye on the ball. I'm gonna make the play and he did Strike to Evan Longoria Slider he counters one and two. Well, we've seen the fastball in the mid 90s and a change up and a slider in the mid 80s 83 85 good arm Good break on that slider, too. Battle back, holding the count at one and two. He was at Buffalo, and in 19 games there, had 13 saves and an earned run average of 0 0.89. Two balls, two strikes. Young man out of. Minnesota. Leo Wagner. So the count goes to 3 2. It's originally drafted by the Indians out of North Dakota State. Exactly, get an extended baseball season at the college level at North Dakota State, do you? No, I wouldn't think so. You didn't get one. Hey, I can remember. Well, he walks Longoria. Two outs. Let's check in with Todd for a moment. Well, Dwayne, I was just at the Rays team store, and guess what the hottest selling jersey is this week? You got it. The Will Myers jersey. This is the regular jersey for $145, and they have the adult t shirts, which look like this. And uh, they started with 150 of these. They have about 10 in just limited sizes at this point. So of all the jerseys sold in the first two days of this homestand, almost 50 percent 
have been Will Myers Shark Week jerseys, and this is the only place you could actually get the Will Myers jerseys is here at Tropicana Field. So there you go. They're getting a new shipment, by the way, if you're coming out to the game tomorrow or the weekend against Detroit. They're getting a new shipment of these T-shirts, which are almost sold out. And then you've got the Will Myers jersey here, too. So there you go, guys. Yeah, those uh, Will Myers uh, shirts are being uh, circled by fans, uh, circling like sharks after those Will Myers jerseys and shirts. Did I hear right? I think you did. Did he fire one in? He did. That was tremendous. <laughs> ear to ear smile. Yeah. Todd Callis, you're the greatest. Will takes the pitch outside. Two and one. Well, we'll see what they have tomorrow morning on the pregame show. Can't wait. Yeah, it was 2-2 two -two to Will. You gotta say he's been pretty deserving after the week that he's had. He has, and uh, you you have to like not only the performance, but the demeanor oh. of him coming here, high high profile, Fenway, Yankee Stadium, coming home. He's handled himself brilliantly. There's a lot to like about this kid even away from what he brings to the field. I like the I mean I'll, I'll just go to the no batting gloves and the walk up music. I'm sold. <laughs> you go old school just right there. Yep. Maybe a couple strips of tape here and there and then you come up to Motley Crue. Winner. It's one of his favorites. Likes it. it hey, like I said, had to get your blood pumping. <laughs> 3 and 2 now. Two outs. Gory on the move at first, and the pitch is fouled out of play. You know, and, and you know what is even better? Is he's obviously a, a fan of, of good music from even back in the day, because that's way before his time. I mean, Miley Crew, they still do their little gig every now and then, but that, this is not their era. Well, he has a sense of perspective. Maybe. Not just living in the moment, in and, the day. And an understanding of what rock and roll is. <laughs> 3 2 down to third. Encarnacion's throw to first in time. Ray's going to walk, leave a man. We go to the seventh. It's 4 to 1, Tampa Bay. Brothers bring a little folk to Tropicana Field this Saturday following the Rays Tigers game. Up and coming band known for their live performances, sure to rock the house with their unique folk rock style. Don't miss this one of a kind concert experience. Visit RaysBaseball.com for tickets. They're headed this way from, uh, they hail from upstate New York. So they'll be here Saturday. 
Jose Bautista will lead off the seventh inning. Jake McGee takes over on the mound after Matt Moore made a career high 120 pitches tonight. Yeah, nice job by Matt Moore. He gives way to a very similar pitcher. Big fastball from the left side comes on for the 36th time, and you can see racking up some strikeouts. 40 and 29 and two thirds. Batista, 0 for 2 with a walk, and he takes that fastball for ball one. Big cut right there. Fastball and a big swing and miss. And that's a pitch that you don't see Jose Bautista miss very often. And we talked about this 11 game winning streak coming into play yesterday for this Blue Jay team. And Bautista was one of the guys who had not been smoking the ball during that time frame. That's right. And down he goes. Yeah, he was hitting just a little over 160 for the life of that uh, winning streak and hitting. For the month of June under 190. Well, and it's a big indicator that that fastball that that's a fastball. The second fastball of the at bat the one that he swung through is one that he typically makes solid contact with. Three and one. But but he's another guy that you can see those numbers as a pitcher. You disregard. Him. Yeah. You know that he's dangerous. You know that he's capable of breaking out at any moment on any pitch. You try to continue to exploit the weaknesses, but you understand he's still a tremendous hit. There goes the bat. A swing and a miss. But it was in Carnacion in last night's game. And 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 again, the, the, the grip stick or the spray, something's not working. That one had some fuzz on it. It's a full count. We, how are there not more injuries? It's really amazing. I mean, it? a helicopter of a bat yep. up into the stands. And look at this right at the camera. Watch your lips. Yeah, tell me how that doesn't take someone out. Reaches of the upper deck. Seven pitch at bat for Bautista. Well, the check swing foul ball. He facing his first hitter in the seventh. And again, a foul ball out of play. So we've gone to nine pitches. This next one, number 10. The full count on Jose Bautista. Foul ball straight back. Bautista. Early in his career made the rounds. Including a brief stop here. In Tampa Bay. And ball four on the 11th pitch of the at bat. McGee walks it. This is 
Well, uh, an early pregame show tomorrow coming up on Rays Live. The pregame show presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. It's a Web Wednesday, and Ari Dickey's knuckleball will be on display. And a look at the successful month of June by Ben Zomerst. And on Rays Live, presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. And what time is that at? It's going to be at 11.30. Yes. I'm going to bring the noise tomorrow, D Wayne. All right. I'll look forward to it. I love the 140 Sunday starts. Mm -hmm. Those are great. You give me a nooner. Yep. Look out. Look out. I'll be uh, yes. expecting a lot from you tomorrow. Y you're going to get it. <laughs> and then some. All right. One and one to count. One ball game here. So two and one count. Four for six. McGee here in the seventh. Kyle Farnsworth busy in the bullpen for the Rays. Right side out of play. Two and two. As far as worth. We're at Cecil up in the bullpen down the left field line for Toronto. To right, Myers will go to the track for it and make the catch. Carnacion hit it deep, but about three steps from the wall, and that is out number one. Myers appeared to be comfortable on that fly ball. Well, we've seen the footage of him out there working with George Hedrick. Not, not an easy roof to get used to. We've seen visiting players, and for all intents and purposes, the last couple of games, Will Myers has been a visiting player. Here at Tropicana Field. Mm -hmm. And so it's not easy to pick that ball up. You gotta remember those balls are rubbed up with the Mississippi mud and they've got a dark hue to them, just like the roof here. And so you've got to go out there, put in extra work, extra time. He's done that. You know, and he'll continue to learn while he's out there. He's gonna be out there plenty. We know that. That's the game plan. Adam Lynn takes the pitch for a ball. His experience is either a hit or a strikeout against McGee. Three out of eight with five strikeouts. Ground ball headed to second. Bobbled by Johnson to Escobar one. Safe at first. Well, that little bobble prevented the Rays from getting the double play. Bautista forced at second. Well, the little bobble cost him, but it still was awfully close. That ball gets. Through the wickets with yeah. Loney trying to sell it. And he may have been right. As mm -hmm. you see, Adam Lynn not going to the front edge of the bag, but his foot landing on the middle top of the bag. You want to go to that front edge, obviously closer to home plate. He goes to the middle and it's such a bang bang play. Hitter is Mark DeRosa. How close it was at first. Ball into the glove, the foot just off the bag. I vote for robots. <laughs> I actually don't. I just... No, that you're just jesting. Yes. Well, hopefully everybody else does. <laughs> Hot shot, the line drive caught by Longoria. What a catch down there by Evan. Evan straight up. Glove arm extended and he made the grab to retire the side. Stamp that one with a star for Evan. Seventh inning stretch time. Four to one. Praise.
Ready, set, go to Tropicana Field Sunday, the 30th of June. When the Rays take on the Tigers, kids 14 and under receive a Matt Joyce race car presented by the Crown Automotive Group. While supplies last, visit RaysBaseball.com. Brett Cecil, the new pitcher, as we go to the home half of the seventh, Yadel Escobar steps in against the tall lefty. Cecil has been very good out of this bullpen for the Blue Jays. He's been ridiculous. And he's throwing harder than he's ever thrown. Well, I, I believe it's 19 and two thirds scoreless innings in the streak that he's on. But I think even more impressive than that, his hitters are 0 for their last 40 against him. It's amazing, huh? It really is. 0 for 40. Escobar with a two ball one strike count. Now three and one. James Loney will be next. Burley started worked five innings gave up eight hits four runs. He walked four and struck out two. Neil Wagner pitched one inning scoreless and gave up a walk. A lot of base runners for both clubs. Right now the Rays have stranded ten and the Blue Jays have stranded ten. And up the middle base hit into center field. So there's Escobar with the leadoff single greeting Brett Cecil. One for 41 now. That's a start. He knew that streak had to come to an end at some point. And the Rays put their first two men aboard here against Cecil. Breaking new ground against this guy. <laughs> really, he's not been used to this. Loney's three for four tonight. Now this ball was elevated out over the plate. James Loney stays inside of it. You see him just slice that ball the other way. Throwing right hander. Delabar starts to maneuver down there in the bullpen. Molina's going to be the hitter for the Rays. Jay's looking for a bunt, a full swing by Molina. Strike one. Okay, that that um, that hit by Escobar. Was the first hit that Cecil had given up since May 28th. It's a while. How about that? <laughs> there go the runners, and there will be no throw. Boy, Escobar got a great jump off second, and Loney. Followed into second base, so a double steal for the Rays. Escobar to third, and Loney up to second base. Well, catching him by surprise. Watch Escobar. Look at, look at. He's got a moving lead, and there was no shot. You talk about a great jump. Well timed out by Yanil.
So it's one and one to Molina. It's two and one. First stolen base for Escobar. And one more and he catches this guy. That's right. Escobar has been caught once though. Molina is perfect two for two. He knows how to pick his spots. He's a catcher. <laughs> Nice chance here for the Rays to add to their three run lead. Nobody out. Two one wide. Three balls and a strike. It's Kelly Johnson on deck. Long look by Cecil and Molina steps back. That's a strike, and it's three and two. Well, Cecil might be throwing a lot harder, but he's not working any quicker. And he you know really what? slowed this to a snail's pace. How do we talk about that all the time? You know, there there's some starters that are very deliberate, and, and you know that's fine. But it seems as you go into the bullpen, chop down to third. Carnacion's going to throw out the later the runners home. You start to get into bullpens, and they throw out the anchor. It's unbelievable. I mean, the game just grinds to a halt. Well, there's Kelly Johnson. The first pitch is in there, a strike. Who's the brains behind this operation in the booth? Yes. Our esteemed statistician. Yes. Just sent me a note that that steal may have prevented a triple play. Ground ball down to third foul. Well, you Ray's know had what? Escobar second and Loney first. Yeah. And if Molina hits that little ground ball to third, could have been a triple play. Yeah, you're thinking not right on the bag, but didn't need to be. Yeah. Get to the bag. You're going to get Loney at second. Yeah. And then it's a race. Yeah. That's why he's the brains behind the operation. That's right. Somebody has to be. Yes. We don't even want to be. No, no, no. Nope. Just do our part. The foul ball. The, the very nerve center. Rays have 10 hits tonight and four runs and a chance to get a couple more runs. Kelly fouls it again. A little 
whole number headed towards second. DeRosa is going to have to go to first with the throw, and that will get one of those runners home. Escobar crossing the plate. It's going to make it five to one. So a little contact, all that was required there as Loney goes to third. Now Kelly Johnson swings and misses two times early in the count, battles back and just puts the ball in play. That's kind of going to what Joe Madden was saying about this lineup and their ability to avoid the strikeout. They do there and they score another run. And a Metro PCS call to the bullpen for Toronto. Reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Tampa Bay Rays. Desmond Jennings in here against Steve Delabar. Delabar's first pitch, a 94 mile per hour fastball inside. Two hits in this game for Jennings. A run scored and a run batted in. One. one. Al Barnesworth back up in the raised bullpen. Two and one. At third with two outs. Sean Rodriguez on deck. Three balls, two strikes. Delabar can be very tough on right handed hitter. He's got a little bit of crossfire action. He's obviously seen the big arm with that fastball mid upper 90s. Sweep the breaking ball. Foul ball off the mask of Aaron Sebia. Delabar broke his elbow in 2009 and had extensive surgery. Did not pitch at all in 2010. And actually started the spring of 2011 coaching. Baseball in uh, his hometown of uh, Elizabethtown, Kentucky. He walks Jennings. Sixth walk given up by Toronto pitchers tonight. 
The Rays have given up seven, six of those to Matt Moore. And now Sean Rodriguez will be lifted, and Matt Joyce will come on to him. So Matt Joyce will be the pinch hitter against the hard throwing right hander Steve Delabar. And Aaron Seabe is being checked out after taking a foul ball directly to the mask during the Jennings at bat. And apparently he's all right. Here's what brought all that on. I mean, straight on direct contact. That mask there for protection, but still the impact. Severe. And here's Joyce. Takes a pitch inside. One ball, no strikes. That's four out of ten this year, pinch hitting. That brings him on. A little better matchup, the lefty against the right hander. One and one. were four to one winners last night they lead five to one tonight and a two ball one strike count on Matt Joyce the bullpen has been a big part of the success story for the Blue Jays in recent weeks Dustin McGowan is up again he was throwing in the bullpen earlier tonight It out of play, two and two. Well, day game tomorrow. We'll be with you at 11:30 with our pregame coverage. R.A. Dickey against Roberto Hernandez. Wrap-up game of the series with the Blue Jays. Swing and a miss. Joyce out on strikes. The Rays are finished in the inning, but they add a run and lead five to one.
Rays have built a four run lead. We head into the eighth inning. Five to one the score. They've out hit the Blue Jays. Ten to four. And Kyle Farnsworth will take over. Moore for six. McGee for one. And now Kyle Farnsworth on the mound. Kyle comes on for the 27th time. 2 0 record. 20 and two thirds innings worth of work. And Joyce in the game stays on to play left field after pinch hitting for Sean Rodriguez. And Rajah Davis, the left fielder for the Blue Jays, leads it off. Barnesworth throws him a strike. Side. O2. Texas Rangers batting in the top of the ninth inning in New York, tied with the Yankees 3 3. The Angels have an 11 5 lead on the Tigers in Detroit. That's in the bottom of the seventh inning. High fly ball, not too deep to center. Desmond Jennings makes the grab. One away in the eighth. Rockies have scored a run in the seventh at Fenway. It's eight to three, Boston now, top of the seventh. Rasmus takes the pitch for a strike. Orioles beat the Indians six to three. Chris Tillman got the win. He's nine and two now. For the Baltimore Orioles. You remember he came up last year for the Orioles. What Fourth of July and went nine and three the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. He's just done nothing but flip the switch and win since his call up middle of last year. The Masterson was after his 10th win of the year for the Indians. He's now nine and six. One and two the count on Rasmus. And Johnson got the save for Tillman and the Orioles. That's number 27 for Johnson. Rasmus lines it into right. That's going to be a base hit. One hop to the wall. Rasmus digs for two and he's in there. So Rasmus has a two base hit, his 12th of the year. This ball meant away ends up down and in. How many times do we see it with the left handed hitter down and in? Drop the head. Just shoot that ball down into the corner. A two base hit. Second hit for Rasmus tonight. He's two for four. There's J. Pierre in Sebia. He has a walk and two strikeouts. There's pitch strike. Up in the raised bullpen. Farnsworth slipped as he made that delivery of fastball. The count is one and one. We've seen Kyle do that before. That little stumble on the delivery to the plate. Farnsworth last pitched on Thursday against the Yankees in New York. Pitched the ninth inning and an eight to three. Ray's win. That was the start by Matt Moore when Moore hooked up against Andy Pettit. 
Two balls and a strike the count. And a line drive caught down to second not in time for the double play Longoria made the catch on that hot shot by Aaron Sebia. Yeah, and just a slight hesitation by Evan after he caught that ball as he looked back at Rasmus at second base and, and even if he would have thrown it I don't know if Kelly Johnson would have been there in time. You'll see right here just a slight hesitation before he throws it to second. Kelly probably wouldn't have got there anyway. Might have caught the ball a little sooner, but not would have would have not been on the bag. Not to mention, you just don't want to catch that line drive and haphazardly just turn and fire. You gotta make sure that someone's clearing themselves to get to the bag. Here's my serious story is the shortstop. Leading away from Ball one. Did he go? He held up on the appeal down to Paul Himmel. Two and nothing. First, Farnsworth will have to cover, takes the toss from Loney. No runs, a hit, and the man left. Bottom of inning eight coming, 5 1. Rays. Sure to join us after the final out for the Rays Live the Post Game Show presented by Checkers. How about Matty Moe tying his career high with 11 strikeouts? Dwayne and BA will break down his crazy line. Todd and Arrestus steer the ship as always, and I'll be in the clubhouse gathering those interviews. Well, the Rays can finish this one off. Well, it ends well. Dustin McGowan on now for the Blue Jays with the Rays leading five to one. And Ben Zobritz, the first man to face McGowan. Zobritz with a double and a sacrifice fly tonight. And quickly behind in the count 0 2.
Two ball and two strikes. It's Jamie Wright. Now there in the Rays bullpen. Rays got an extra run in the seventh to make it a four run lead. Ground ball right side. Lynn reaching down to make the pickup. McGowan covers. One away. Don't miss the next episode of Inside the Rays this Sunday. Get an inside look at how the Rays develop their players through their minor league system. The Rays way is the environment of cooperation amongst the staff. A team effort to produce pro baseball players. Inside the Rays, the Rays way airs Sunday after Rays Live. Evan Longoria pitches a strike to Evan. Evan has been on base four times, three walks, and a base hit. One of the walks, an intentional pass. He was intentionally walked in the fourth inning to get to Will Myers, and Will singled into left center field, driving in a run. Ball, two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. Now in the fifth pitcher for the Blue Jays. And he had a little something on that one mid 90s. And he strikes out Longoria. One more time. Let's check out Todd Callis. Todd what's up. at and tweet at and Twitter poll one final time Dwayne. It's about Will Myers and here it is his first week in the big leagues. He made his debut a week ago tonight. What have you thought so far compared to your expectations? Hashtag TV1, he has exceeded expectations. Hashtag TV2, about what you expected. Hashtag TV3, you're expecting or looking for even more. Tweet your votes to add Sun Sports Rays. Results of the postgame show. Myers bounces one foul, strike one. Though we were joking about that earlier, about which one you would pick, but he would pick looking for even more. He would. And, and I would pick, in all seriousness, he's exceeded expectations. Everything that's been put upon him, mm -hmm. the first week that he fired out, he went 0 for 4 in game one of that day night doubleheader. Yep. After that, hitting seven straight coming into today. Yep. And then obviously, let's see, where am I? Well, I got to flip my book, Dwayne. Okay. Yep. Pretty bad at that. There he is. Yeah. See, now eight straight. Yeah. Fourth inning, base hit. That's RBI. right. Yep. I have that down, actually. <laughs> Day for me. Way to go. No, but now, so now he's hitting eight straight. Yep. You know, hasn't done anything to embarrass himself defensively. Mm -hmm. Has shown athleticism. Has shown tremendous hustle. You like when he hits a ground ball in the infield. He's running hard to first. He's handled the the height, the pressure, the scrutiny. Handled that very well. He went third to, or first to third in the third inning. Swing and a miss. Counts two two. So I think that if you're as part of the Rays front office, the coaching staff, teammate, you say, wow, this kid has come up and handled himself very well for the first week. On and off the field. And the count is full. I'm just sad to see the week come to an end. It's like that last episode. You know what I mean? The, the, the final shark week episode. Yep. And you're so sad because it was such a good, solid week. Yeah. But you want to, like, start it again. Well, and you can now. The technology. And we'll do that tomorrow. Okay. Right and early. 3-2. He checks and draws the walk. So Myers heads to first. 
And on top of all that, he's shown an eagle eye. Look at that. Off the plate. Fox track agrees with Will Myers. Seven walks given up by Toronto pitching tonight. Here's Janelle Escobar. Takes a big cut. John Gibbons club had won 11 in a row coming into this series. The Rays grabbed a win last night. They lead in this one. Headed toward the middle and out of the reach of Asturias in the center. Myers stops at second on Escobar's third hit of the night. Well, that's the second at bat in a row. Last one coming last inning in the seventh that Escobar has used the middle of the field. Another ball, this one on the inner half. And he's able to push it back up the middle and keep this inning going for the Rays. Today we talked about his defense earlier. But I'll tell you what, what he's done offensively since the middle of April, when he was, I believe it was the 17th of April, he was hitting 089. That's right. And I'll tell you what, he has been outstanding since then. And we're talking now over two months of solid hitting by Escobar to go along with that tremendous defense. James Loney stroking one back into right, but Bautista in line to make the catch. The Rays lead two. We go to the ninth. 5-1 Tampa Bay. for Fox Sports 1, America's new 24-hour sports network. Fox Sports 1 will be your home for great live sports, all the news and highlights you want, and shows and specials that only Fox can bring you. Fox Sports 1 coming August 17th. Jamie Wright will take over on the mound for the Rays. Fourth pitcher tonight. His 34th appearance. He'll face the top of the order. Sam Fold in the game as well, and he plays right field. Yankees have won their game. A walk off home run by Ichiro Suzuki in the ninth inning, and it's a 4 3 final. Melky Cabrera in the batter's box here in the ninth. Pitch from Jamie Wright outside of fastball at 88.
Wright pitched an inning Saturday in New York. Jose Bautista next, and then Encarnacion. A lot of men left on base tonight. 14 for the Rays and 11 for the Blue Jays. In fact, there have been men left on in every half inning except the fifth. When the Blue Jays went down in order, one, two, three. A couple of strikeouts in that inning for Matt Moore. Moore had 11 tonight. Ground ball and a base hit the other way for Cabrera. It's his second hit. He had butted his way on in the fourth inning. Right now the Blue Jays have six hits. And here's the dangerous Jose Bautista. Going for two with two walks. And Fernando Rodney is up in the Rays bullpen now. Batista with 16 home runs. One out of six against Wright, who's hit him three times. Well, you see Jose Bautista and his setup here is right on top of the plate. And Jamie Wright has a lot of movement on that fastball, a lot of run he can get. You can understand why he'd clip him. That's a strike, one and one. You can also understand why Joe Madden getting Fernando Rodney up right here. Just a four run lead. You do not want to mess around with this Toronto lineup. Cut fastball there, finding its way across the plate. Yeah, they can strike in a hurry. They're second in the league in home runs with 98. High fly ball down the left side. Escobar digging hard. Joyce is there. Fair ball, and Matt makes the catch to retire Bautista, and that is out number one. Yeah, big out there. Big out there, Jose Bautista. I tell you, the Rays have done a nice job against him. He's drawn a couple of walks. They've pitched him tough. Now Edwin Encarnacion. Encarnacion walked and singled his first two plate appearances. But low. Ray's record for combined men left on base in a nine inning game is 26. Against Boston in September of 2003, when the Red Sox left 13 and the Rays left 13. 2 and 0. Oh. So to this point, the Rays and the Blue Jays have stranded a combined 25 runners tonight. Feels like more. <laughs> Hot shot to third. Longoria to Johnson one. First base two. That ends it. Hot shot ground ball and Longoria starts the double play to end this game. And the Rays win it five to one to take the first two games of the series and the first two games of this home stand. Matt Moore is going to get the win.